In some cultures, aesthetics are not valued with as much weight as the sciences and other areas of academia. However, the Japanese have made a point of keeping traditional art alive right alongside its developing technologies. Kimono, geisha, theater, music, and contemporary art are living proof of the importance of aesthetics in Japan today. The kimono has had a long history in Japan. It is recently becoming popular again. In the middle of a crowded street or subway station, there will be a person wearing a kimono in traditional shoes, an amazing sight to see. There are many types of kimono, each worn according to the person's age, status, season, or event. Like the United States, clothing in Japan is worn to complement the seasons in terms of color, pattern, and material. In the spring, one may see or wear brightly colored kimono with floral-like patterns. The yukata is a Japanese summer kimono, which is seen on both men and women. The name yukata originated from the Japanese word yu, which means bath, and katabira, meaning under clothing. Thousands of years ago, court nobles wore them after bathing. Yukata slowly gained popularity over the years alongside the Japanese public bath called onsen. The yukata is the most desired type of Japanese kimono because of its lightweight cotton fabric. It can be worn for festivals, summer day wear, or simple night attire. Young and unmarried ladies usually wear brightly colored kimono, whereas married women, as well as elderly women, wear simple, more subdued colors. However, new kimono designs are becoming more versatile and generic to appeal to a wider range of people. In the Japanese world of fashion, styles come and go, but the kimono remains. The modernization of Japan, especially that of the last 50 years, has caused the extinction of geisha in every city except Kyoto. In modern Kyoto, geisha still live on, but not as they had in the past. The modernization has hit their numbers drastically, leaving their legacy only to the streets of Gion. Even there, geisha are hidden, leaving Maiko, their apprentices, to be the faces on the streets and the performers for tourists. Maiko are also rare. They've become a mystery to tourists who hunt them down with cameras, causing them to have to race to their destinations. Despite their rushed lives, they've been able to hold on to their past. In the past, geisha worked in tea houses as entertainers, most tea houses in modern Kyoto are in the back alleyways of Gion. Here they sang, danced, played the shimasen, served tea and sake, and practiced the art of conversation and etiquette for the prominent men of Japan. However, World War II caused the halt of most entertainment. Gion was closed, forcing women to work elsewhere during the war. The numbers never did rebound, and geisha have become more of a tourist icon than ever. Their continued traditions mystify and entertain, and tourists from around the world visit Gion in hopes to catch a glimpse of these women. When one walks up the stairs from the Hibashi Ginza train station and through the Tsukiji exit and sees the giant Kabuki Zo theater looming above, it becomes apparent how theater is still a very important aspect of Japanese aesthetics today. This is a clip of the Kabuki Zo theater in Hibashi Ginza. As you can see, it seats hundreds of people, all of which are filing out of the building right now. Kabuki Theater was developed in the later years of the Ashikaga Shogunate, 1338 through 1573, in Kyoto, because of the need to express social conflicts caused by strict isolation of sexes demanded by the Buddhist religion. Kabuki is perhaps the most theatrical of all the other Japanese theater forms with its complicated plots and emphasis on dramatic skill. It is the Shakespeare of Japan. Other theater forms of Japan include Bunraku, a form of puppet theater created in the early 1600s, Kyogen, literally meaning crazy talk, which features comedies of dialogues from everyday life and human difficulties, and No, which is a blending of recitation, chants, and ritual dancing as a demonstration of Buddhist morals. Music is an integral part of every culture, and Japan is no different. Although it is rare to see traditional music for popular entertainment, it is still taught at schools and has influenced modern Japanese musicians, such as the Yoshida Brothers, who incorporate modern and traditional aspects in their music. Street musicians thrive at parks and festivals. It is just as common to see a guitar in Japan as it is to see a traditional instrument. Like other cultural aspects, globalization has created a society in which music is common to all people.
A lot of Japanese music is not Japanese, but it is no less entertaining. Japan has always been known for its attention to aesthetics. Today, the art world in Japan teams with talent. Isumi Kato, Yoshito Manara, and Yasumasa Morimura are featured in the permanent collection at the Hara Museum of Contemporary Art in Tokyo, as are countless others from various regions of the world. At the National Museum of Modern Art in Kyoto, Akino Fuku has been praised for her lifelong dedication to the arts, her work ranging from the traditional Japanese paintings to her more recent oil pastels. Kaikai Kiki Gallery in Tokyo, founded by Takashi Murakami in 2001, features well-known artists such as Aya Takano, Chiho Aoshima, Chinatsuban, and Mr. Art festivals, such as the one that is being advertised here in a Tokyo train station in April 2008, are not surprising in Tokyo, our world's largest city. There are several contrasting values in Japanese art, particularly traditional and contemporary aspects. In a strolling garden nearby the Hara Art Museum, visitors will see this contemporary sculpture. Surrounding this work of art are three different types of trees and a stone lantern. The pine tree is a friend of winter, symbolizing strength and endurance as it remains green throughout the winter. The cherry tree represents the temporary nature of life, reflected in the blooming and quick dropping of its petals, and is also a metaphor for a samurai who lives a full, rich life and dies while still in his prime. The willow symbolizes supernatural beings. It is said to have the power to haunt humans. It also symbolizes weakness and is a sign of spring. The stone lantern brings light into the darkness, literally as well as figuratively. The orange sculpture, in contrast to these symbols, creates a harmony between modern and traditional Japan. In the front garden of the Hara Museum, nature is again juxtaposed with the sleek modern forms of the sculptures. In fact, Sculptures can be spotted in various cities across Japan, in parks, in strolling gardens on rooftops. Murals are also popular in Japan, and are quite effective in giving an area a bright, cheery feeling. Because there is such a high level of respect between individuals, Japan is a very clean country, and graffiti and other forms of vandalism are rare. However, it can be found. Aesthetics in Japan are not limited to sculptures and paintings, although these forms of expression are easily found in museums, restaurants, and hotels. From the blessings calligraphed in prayer books at temples and shrines, to the neon signs flashing above the skyscrapers, from the displays in shopping centers to the sandwich boards outside of restaurants, from the hundreds of cranes at the Hiroshima Peace Park, to the numerous patterned umbrellas crowding the streets on a rainy day. From the technical drawings on packages of food to the students drawing cartoons in the classroom, art is prevalent in Japan. This film has been brought to you by the Japanese Connections program with generous support from the Freeman Foundation.